Hi, everyone. We are so glad you could join us today for Creative Coping. My name is Alofa, and I am the event coordinator for Samaritan Counseling Center Hawaii. Anissa, who is working behind the scenes to make sure Zoom runs smoothly, is the deputy director at NAMI Hawaii. Please feel free to enter your name and where you're joining us from in the chat. While you do that, I will share a little bit about us. NAMI Hawaii provides mental health programs and educational classes, such as NAMI's free support groups for peers and families, as well as a free eight-week family-to-family program. Samaritan Counseling Center Hawaii is a nonprofit organization that provides professional, accessible mental health counseling sensitive to the spiritual traditions of individuals, families, and communities in Hawaii, regardless of their ability to pay. We also coordinate community events like this one to provide mental health education, strength and resilience, and to help reduce the stigma of mental illness. Plus, as a part of our Creative Coping series, we will be offering a booklet compiling all the work created and submitted by our attendees. If you'd like to learn more about what our organizations offer, please visit namihawaii.org and Samaritan Counseling Center Hawaii.org. Also, a few quick reminders before we start. This workshop is for educational purposes only and is not therapy or treatment advice. Please consult your physician or a qualified healthcare provider if you have specific mental health concerns. Please keep in mind that we want to create a safe, supportive space where people are free to share their stories and questions and receive understanding and compassion. Also note that we are recording this workshop, so it can be uploaded to our YouTube channel later. If you would prefer, you are welcome to change your name on Zoom to protect your privacy. Last but not least, we ask that you remain muted when you're not speaking. Now that we've gotten through that, I will pass it off to our host, Gina. Aloha, everyone. Thank you to Alofa for the introduction, and thank, to, thank you to you all for showing up today for our, our doodling session. Um, to get started, I just quickly like to go over some intentions that I want us to keep in mind over the next hour. So first, I want us to exercise our eyes, brain, and body axis. So by this, I want us to get in tune with translating what's going on in our brains and what we're seeing, and then putting that down onto paper. Two, I want us to reflect on our feelings and experiences in a neutral way in which we can create art at the end. And three, to let go of perfectionism. So like Alopa said, um, I'm a PhD or in the description, I'm a PhD student. I'm, a, I'm studying microbiology. And honestly, it's a very high pressure environment where sometimes I feel like I'm just failing for weeks and weeks on end. And that can be really taxing on my mental health. So if I have like a presentation or an experiment that I think could have gone better, I really get stuck in this loop of thinking about it over and over to the point where, you know, I can't sleep. It's not productive. And ultimately, um, it's making these experiences more negative than they have to be. So by doing something creative like this, we are then more able to reflect on these events. And there's actually something to show for it in the end. And that for me really helps me to get out of these loops that I find myself stuck in. So I'd like to share this quote with you by Pablo Picasso. It took me four years to paint like Raphael, but a lifetime to paint like a child. Because sometimes letting go of this need to be perfect takes conscious effort on your part. So let's go to the next slide. All right, so before we begin, I'd like us to all do some stretches to just relax a little. So please, if everyone could just stretch out their shoulders and their neck, and mm -hmm. especially their wrists and their hands. All right, let's go to the next slide. So looking at these two shapes, if I were to tell you that one of these shapes is named Boba and one of these shapes is named Kiki, um, which one would you think is which? If you could just type in the chat which shape on the left or the right would be named Boba or Kiki, that would be great. All right, so we got so we got so we got our answers. It's looking like the majority is saying the left is Kiki and the second is Boba. So these shapes are from an experiment that they did in 1929, where they found that different sounds and words can correspond to shapes and ideas. And there is no right answer, but this phenomenon tends to be common between languages. So let's go to the next slide for our first exercise. 
So the way that we're going to do this is for exercises, I'm going to give all my instructions at once. Um, and then we'll switch to a camera that's on my hands where I can show you a demonstration step by step and we can draw together. So um, and during that time, we're going to post the instructions for each exercise in the chat if you would want to look back at them. So our first exercise is we're drawing a boba or kiki shape using our name. And we're thinking about how our name feels when we say them. So let's go, let's stop sharing right now and go to the camera that's on my hands. All right, so if we can see that, um, we can choose any color that would, you would like, maybe something that represents how you're feeling today or even your favorite color. And then, you want to first identify the sounds in your name. So my name is, is Jaina. And you can split this into three sounds. So J, A, and then Na. And for me, J is like, I think it's giving a boba sound, but it's a little rough. So I'm gonna say J is maybe like this. And then A is kind of sharper and it rises at the end. So A, and then when I say na, I drop my jaw. So I want, to, maybe I'll make a big swoop and connect it back to the beginning here. So when you write, when you write your, um, your name shape, I want you to just say your name really slowly as you draw it. And then think about the way that it sounds in your mouth. So we'll give you maybe one minute to draw yours. And then you can draw a couple if you want and see which one feels the best to you. And then at the end, if you could just label label the sounds so we can see um, which is which. All right, so we can start drawing now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start us a timer. So you're one minute starting now. And I will give you guys a warning before it's done. Awesome, so now that we are done or finishing up, you can continue if you'd like. Um, I would like us to start with some self introductions. So if you're comfortable, um, let us, if you're comfortable, you can unmute and tell us your name and then show your name shape to the camera. And let's also share a boring fact about ourselves because I think fun facts can be a little high pressure to seem cool and interesting. So let's do boring. Um, so I can go first as an example. My name is, my name is Jaina. This is my name shape. And a boring fact is that I think that the pillow that I sleep on is too flat. All right, so if we could have some volunteers, that'd be awesome. Hello. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I am Mariam from Egypt. I'm uh, uh, in dentistry, I'm 21, I'm 20 years old. Um. I don't know a boring fact about myself, but all I can think of right now is that I'm a horrible overthinker. That's like my main problem that I always think about. So I'll share what my name, um, what I like do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, how do I, feel? okay, so um, this is my name. Uh -huh. I feel like the ma is like a little bit sassy and then we, and then um, like Mariam. So I drew it two ways. This is the ma which going up a little bit, looking like boba. And then we, I feel like this one is like, all of it is like, it looks like the boba shape you just showed us. So ma, and then re is like this line. And I felt like the last one is also a little bit sassy. So I did like a, a wobbly whoop a little bit here. And then this was the second shape I drew. I felt like ma also felt like a little bit straight. So I drew it as a um, straight line, like ma. Um, and then because I'm a perfectionist as well, so I felt like I'm a, a little bit straight sometimes. And then the re felt um bubbly, and then I'm um, just I don't know, plain. So, yeah, that's awesome. Thank I, you. Ben. Yeah, thank you. My name's Linda, and and oh, can you see my name's Linda, and the electrician just left my house. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I don't have any texters. Uh, I'm I'm in I'm in Australia, and my name is Polish. Uh, Basha, can you see that? Right. A boring fact about me is it's six in the morning. I haven't brushed my hair. Wow, six! Thank you for coming. It's six in the morning Sunday, and my name um, 
is very burr, bulbous. So there's the the burr, and um, the it's almost like a mouth that the sha shoots out like that. Sha, it's like steam, and there's the ah as it reverberates away. Yes, can you all hear me? Yes. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to hold up the drawing. Um, I have, my name is Malia, it's pronounced Ma-Li-Ha, and um, I first uh, made the triangle and then a couple of flowers and then a bear. And um, so I, I just um, divided my name into care and then um, N. And I don't really have an explanation. I just let my my hands go where they were meant to go. And now that I look at it, it looks really weird. <laughs> but I just went with the flow. No, that's perfect. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> right. So the next exercise is what's called a neurographic drawing or an intuitive drawing. Um, so if you have them, if you have colors, um, Let's choose two primary colors, so yellow, red, red, blue, and blue, or blue, yellow. And then the color that's in between them. But you can do all of these without colors if you don't have them. And then we're going to assign one of your primary colors to a frustrating or negative event that you might have had in the past week. And then use that to intuitively doodle a bobo or kiki shape. And then um, right directly on top of it, we're going to use the other color to draw a kiki or boba shape while thinking about that event that we're an event that we're excited for in the next week. And then using using all three colors, we're going to smooth out um, the sharp corners. So let's switch to the hand view so I can quickly show you what that would look like. So my negative event to me is feeling a little, it's feeling a little boba or bluer. So I'll start with that. And then what you should do is really just let your hand, like kind of what Karen said, you just let your hand move move over the paper really slowly while you kind of reflect on that event. And I'm not drawing with intent. I'm just kind of, I'm letting a line happen and wherever it goes, it goes. And the moment that you kind of become aware that you might be trying to do something or make it look like something else, I want you to just switch directions and go, and go in a different place. And we're not drawing with intention again. And I'm going fast for the demo, um, but I would like you to go a little bit slower and try to fill the whole page up going really slowly. And try to keep the lines spaced out a little so not so busy. So here we're actually kind of, we're using the brain and body axis, but we're ignoring the eyes a little bit. I'm actually not really looking at the paper at all. And when you feel like you're done reflecting about that event, um, don't linger on the line and draw more. Um, let's just, you can just mosey back to the beginning um, and close the line. And then I'd like you for, then when you think about the event that you're looking forward to, you can just do the same thing with the opposite Bobo or Kiki and draw that just directly on top of your previous line. So we're going to do three minutes to do both lines. So a minute and a half each. And Alofa will let you know when the halfway point is, when you should, we should go to switch the lines. And um, we can start doing that now, if Alofa, you'd like to start a timer. Yep, of course. So well, can you please explain the second color? Oh, so like what, first what color... you mean by an upcoming event? So the first color, you're going to draw a bobo or kiki line thinking about an event in the past week that you um, were maybe frustrated with. And then the next color you're going to use to draw the opposite bobo or kiki line um, while you think about an event that you were, that you're looking forward to in the next week. All right, everyone. So while you finish up your lines, I'd like to show you the next part. So when I want us to smooth the corners out. So Using the intermediate color, let's identify anywhere where the two colors interact. So the blue and the pink here, um, I have purple, but they're in the middle, but they make this kind of V shape right here. And what I wanna do is take that V and smooth it out into a U shape. <laughs> I'm just gonna smooth out all the sharp corners. Sure if you were like... And if you see, 
Um, anywhere that one color intersects itself, use that color and then find the V and turn them turn them into U's. All right, so um, we'll give you maybe three minutes to smooth out all of those sharp corners. And um, instead of thinking about a particular thing, I, I instead welcome you to kind of zone out and clear your mind um, while you get into the groove of smoothing out the corners. All right, so if there are any volunteers, we can share our neurographic doodles. And if you're comfortable, maybe the frustration and, and the optimism that went into your art, so for example, this is my doodle. The blue line is representing yesterday when I was trying a new experiment and I was so nervous about it that I messed up and I had to restart it halfway through. And the pink line for me is representing my excitement to go to a farmer's market later. Um, so this is, I don't have much colors on me right now because I'm traveling. So that's, that's what I like work with right now. So for the black line, uh, it uh, shows frustration because I just dealt with an unpleasant situation with my friend uh, where she pointed out something that I don't like about myself in front of a group of people. Uh, this is the black event. It actually happened three times. And then the blue one is uh, my, uh, my brother and my father are traveling. So it's only me and my mother. And we get to spend like a lot of time doing, you know, like shopping and just going out. Uh the um, red line is my bulba line, I suppose, uh, but it's the hard stuff. So I've had a very difficult, despairing week, and um, there's a lot of turmoil in her and um, uh, circular thinking and rumination and un unresolved um, and the blue line is because I've started a full week holiday at the surf coast in South Australia and I'm really looking forward to seeing that surf today and running around in it, even though it's uh, very cold here. It's the beginning of spring. Um, but it's the excitement of the, the waves and the wind. And um, I didn't get very far with my green intersections, but I love the land and the bush and... Um, nature and the birds and uh, I could be at this for hours I can see so um, there's the intersection point in green thank you oh, nice. well, I hope you enjoy your your holiday this weekend thank you oh I'm here for four weeks oh four weeks I thought you said four days <laughs> well, yeah, four weeks that's exciting <laughs> there heads the waves look at the wacko <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you I have a pink line and a green line. I didn't get all the way done with my intersections because um, the third color that I brought wasn't working out. But uh, so I started using pen. But so for my my pink line is my my first line, my frustration line. I've been pretty stressed out because my cat is sick. Um, and at this point, I had. A, I had a hard time trying to think of something that I'm looking forward to in the coming week, but I just started thinking about how I would feel when I'm more at peace. So that's what I that's what I got for us this morning. Hello. Um, so this is what I have so far. Um, these usually kind of take me a while because joining all the little intersections but my um orange line there is my frustration line and that um i just have been working with um i started working on some um new things with my therapist and it's just opened up a lot of feelings and thoughts and stress and anxiety. And so I had a really rough few days this week, just trying to hold all of that um, and let that come through. And so that was my orange line. And then my green line represents um, something I'm looking forward to. 
I'm going to meet a friend at a museum tomorrow to go check out a new art exhibit. And I'm really, really excited about that. It's a Frida Kahlo exhibit that's um, come to town. And so I'm excited to see the work and to get to hang out with my friend. Yeah, that is exciting. I like the colors you chose too. Thank you. Yeah. I see that Malia would also like to share. We'll go ahead and pin her video as well. Hi, Ben. Um, I tried to um, keep one a little lighter than the other one. Um, the thing that's really um, I'm um, making me um, frustrated is the fact that um, um, we are uh, presently to, throughout the vacation, we've been in different cities, but Presently, my son just started high school and um, my husband is like, I have to do a few things and he, um, I haven't seen him and he just started high school. On the other hand, my daughter, where she lives and she is um, now doing, her, um, now in her uh, junior year, um, I, I'm um, I'm myself also just taking more uh, toddler studies. Uh, okay, just to clarify, I'm done with school. I hold a doctoral degree in education and I'm an early childcare provider and educator. And so uh, I'm happy about my daughter <laughs> moving forward. And I'm also happy about my son, but I'm missing him a lot. And that's, that's it. Um, it okay. looks really, really horrible, but no, no. one part <laughs> is. <laughs> and I, I, I came here to Fountain Valley. I live in Huntington Beach. I came here to Fountain Valley for my platelet donation appointment. And they said, your blood pressure is low. So come again tomorrow. And oh. yes. So I'm sorry, I just sat at the first bench I saw, and this is a busy street. I apologize for the ground noise, and to keep it out, I'm, I'm going to just insert my headphones in, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for joining us today. I'll go ahead and pass it back to Jaina now. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. That was That was very cool. Um, so let's go back to the PowerPoint for the next exercise. Um, so the next exercise is just kind of an object drawing. This will be practice for our, our very last one. So this is going to bring back um, our eyes into the equation. So it'll it'll connect the eyes, brain, and the arm axis and bring our intention back into our drawings. So we're going to pick an object around us and draw it using one line. So we do this going really slow, very mindful, and thinking about how all of the parts of the object are relating to each other. So if we could switch to my hands um, so I can show a demo very quickly. So for me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose this um, computer mouse right here. And I'm going to start with, I'll start with the left button. And I'm, very, I'm going very slowly and thinking about the angles that it creates um, in relation to each other. So let's say the left button is maybe this big. I want to think how many lengths of the whole mouse is, is one button. So if one button, I think that the whole mouse is maybe three buttons worth of length. So I'm going to draw down here. And then I'm going to try to connect it back up. And when I'm doing this, I'm looking up and down from the object as much as I can. And I'm just being very slow and mindful. So if you have, if you want to go back to a part, you can double back on a line um, as much as you want. If you need to get somewhere, you can just trace your way back there slowly. And if you happen to pick your pen up, just put it back down right where you left off and continue drawing. All right. So, and we're not caring about if it's perfect or if even if it even looks like the object you're trying to draw. We're just trying to put down what we are seeing on the paper. So let's give you 
um, a couple minutes to do that. A All little right, bit. so that was just practice for our last exercise. So we're not going to um, share the results right now, but if you would like to, and we have time left at the end, we can share it then. Um, but let's go back to the PowerPoint to go over our last exercise. So our very last exercise is that we're going to be doing a one-line self-portrait. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, Jaina, you're crazy. Um, but we're just gonna we're gonna do it just like the, the last exercise. So I'd first like you to choose a color if you have one, and then using either a mirror, your uh, phone camera, or maybe your Zoom camera or your Zoom icon, I'd like you to draw yourself. And we're not gonna be thinking, you know, is this pretty? If I'm pretty, I was it gonna, it's gonna be weird. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. And I want us to embrace that weirdness that comes with art. And the vulnerability, the vulnerability that comes with it too. And, you know, think about Picasso and that he thought that it was a skill to be weird and to draw like a child. And then lastly, we're going to add our, our name, Boba or Kiki, over the top of the, of the picture. So let's go to my hands so I can show you a demo real quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a feature on my face that I think is a good reference point. So I... For me, that would be, I think, my glasses. So um, using, I have a mirror next to me. So using the mirror, I'm just looking back and forth very quickly. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw my glasses. And then I'm gonna think, how much space inside of my glasses does my eye take up? So I think maybe my eye takes up a third of my glasses, maybe. And I can go back and finish that later if I want. And then I'm going to go down to my nose. And I think, oh, well, my nose is, I think, one eye's height down from my glasses. And I'm just going very slowly and very intentionally. And then, oopsie, it's OK. My face is a little weird. And then I can go down from my nose, maybe one more eyes width, and start and start on my mouth. And again, I'm doing exactly the same as I did the, the object drawing, just very slowly, very intentionally. And if I um, pick my pick my pen up, I'm just gonna put it right back down and start where I, I last had it. So let's give five minutes to draw our self portraits and then we can come back um, for me to demonstrate the last step. So for the last part of the portrait, we're just going to take a color any color that you want, maybe. And I want you to draw your name shape directly over, oop, directly over um, your portrait. So my name shape was J Na. And the way that this works is we're it's gonna be like exactly like the second exercise, or if you see inter interact. Um, intersections and these sharp corners. I want you to smooth them out and just merge your merge your name, your name shape with your self portrait. And then, if you want, you can always you can maybe add some decorations if you want. Add in some shapes, and really just kind of make it your own. You can go you can go a little crazy right here if you want. So we can start um, a timer for that. So um, you can take some time to finish up if you want. Um, but the last thing that I want us to do is to kind of reintroduce ourselves to each other. So now that we're in a hopefully mind, a more mindful or creative space of mind, if you're comfortable, um, we can share our portraits, our name, and then something that we're proud of. And let's do this in the third person. So for example, um, this is Jaina. And she is very proud of the fact that um, she was pretty nervous to do this kind of class. It's the first time that she's done this sort of thing, but she still she still did it anyway. Okay. Where am I? There. This is Basha. 
She's very proud of the fact that she plays Celtic harp. And didn't know what this workshop would be about, but there's been some great learnings in it. And uh, I'm really surprised at who I appear to be on in this picture. Uh, and I've enjoyed this workshop tremendously. Thank you. Well, thank you. I like your portrait very much. It's very, it's very cool. <laughs> oh, so this is like me when I was young. All right. And then she is Mariam. I don't know how why she turned out that way. Uh, Mariam is proud of herself um, for like a very simple reason. She is a perfectionist. So when she draws or when she does anything, she focuses on the very small details that um, make her at the end um, like not happy of the result because of the stress she went through focusing on every detail. But she drew this without thinking about anything and she actually enjoyed it so much um, that it turned out like this weird way, but yet she's still like happy with it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna say my name. I'm, uh, as said, Mariam Amor from Egypt. Oh, thank you so much. I love that you drew um, a portrait of you as a child. That's so, that's very cute. <laughs> Here's my portrait and my name, Sam. My, is it Bo Boba? Boba? Um, yeah, and something I am proud of myself for. You know, the first thing that came to mind, I'll go ahead and share, is... I'm still sober. Even with the difficulties I've experienced this week, I know in the past in my life, I would have really wanted to numb and escape. And I am still sober. I've been sober for four years now. So it's exciting. I'm proud of that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. Um I'm also a, a perfectionist with a lot of self-criticism. And so I'm just proud of myself for just, um, you know, having the courage to attend this workshop and just go with the flow without judgment, which is a huge, huge thing for me. So thank you for offering this workshop. Thank you, Karen. Really, thank you so much, Karen. I want to thank everyone who, who came and who drew with us and everyone who shared, especially. Um, thank you for being vulnerable with us. Um, and thank you all for coming to draw with me. This was really special. Um, I hope you continue to create and draw and doodle and just put put good energy into your life and not um, not kind of focus on those bad moments that we might have. <laughs>